My name is Trusi. I'm from Shen State and I'm a social worker. I have been working with Canada Myanmar for five years to reintegrate the children out of the orphanages. Since 2015, Canada Myanmar have worked with 46 orphanage directors, 108 families, and 196 children on the transition out of residential care. The way that I can describe about the climatism in our country is that the patron, or as we say in Myanmar, benefactor is the one with the power. Benefactor is always in the position with power and the client is always in the position with no power. Benefactor keep the clients under their control and sometimes manipulate or exploit them. The client must not behave and gratefully towards the benefactor and must always be loyal because the relationship between the benefactors and the clients never end. In Myanmar, the principle that we used to describe clientism is never by the hand that fits you. The way that we can see glycism in the content of the residential care is that orphanage directors always play the beneficial roles by providing food, shelter, care and education to the children in their orphanage. In return, the director expects the children and their family to be grateful and loyal towards them forever. They expect those children to help in their own orphanage and to do any task for them no matter where they are, which is mostly labor tasks. In some cases, the family have to work for the director in exchange for the support they provide for the children. The director also expects the family to follow any decision they make for the children. Therefore, the children and their families are trapped. From our experience of working directly with the orphanage directors, we can assume that 100% of them are benefactors to the children and family. In one case, we saw how clientism can be a positive influence for transition. For example, we tried to reintegrate the children from one of the orphanage who was in our program. The family hesitated to take back their children due to many reasons. However, because the director was fully on board with transition and he understood about the best interests of the child, he talked to the families and all the families changed their mind to open about reintegration. Then we were able to work with families to conduct assessment and to see which children could safely return to their families. In most other cases, we have seen how clientism can negatively influence the family and how it made our job as social worker was very challenging. For example, when we meet with the families, try to conduct assessments to prepare for reintegration, they seem to worry about something and hesitate to answer our question freely. And something strange we noticed was that their responses are exactly the same with each other. They told us that they cannot take back their children from the orphanage because there is no school in the village and they cannot provide for the child. But in our community assessment, we can see clearly there is a school in that village and that the family owns land. Later, we found out that before we went to family visit, they received phone call 
from the director and the director told them what to say to us. So even though many families, they did not have a difficulties to take back their children from the orphanage, but they refused reintegration because they have to follow the decision made by the orphanage director to keep the children in the orphanage. From this, we can see that the directors have full authority. We have also seen many cases of how clitism can be used to exploit children and families. For example, some families sign contracts that are made by the orphanage director that say that the parent cannot contact with their children or take back them to live with them by their own decision until the child turns 18 years old. If the parents try to connect with their children or take them back to their village, contracts say that the family have to pay to the orphanage director some amount of money for every year that their children live in the orphanage as compensation to the orphanage directors. Those contracts are not legal contracts and sometimes they are only verbal agreements. But family don't know much about of legal things. They feel like they recognize that the orphanage director is their benefactor. Some families, they want to take back their children from the orphanage, but they feel like they cannot make the decision because they owe a debt of gratitude to the orphanage director who is their benefactor. We have also one case where an 8 years old child in an orphanage was sexually abused by the orphanage director's nephew. When the child's family heard about sexual abuse, they were shocked because the orphanage director was also their relative. The child's father traveled from their home village to Yangon because he planned to report the case to the police. He also went to take back his child immediately to their home village. But after two days of meeting with the directors and their relatives in Yangon, the father changed his mind and decided not to report to the police. All of their relatives in Yangon and from their village agreed that the director is the best person to take care of the child because she is the benefactor. The parent cannot take care of their child, so the director made agreement between the family and the perpetrator, and the father told us that he forgave the perpetrator. We try our best to support to the family to report to the police and provided counseling and support emotional to the child during the process. We also inform to the Department of Social Welfare and request assistance from the International Child Agency. But the decision up to the parents. Finally, the father decided to follow the director's decision not to report to the police and to keep the children in the orphanage. At first, even though he did not want to do like this. It is important to know about the criticism because if we do not understand it, we will not know who is the key person that holds the power. 
because normally the key person with the power is the one who made the decision. If we know who holds the power, we can build relationship and trust with that person. This is made our work with easier in the future. No matter how hard we try, if we approach the wrong person, our work will be distressed. From our experience of working directly with the orphanage director who is benefited, we have learned that we need to make sure that they understand giving children in the orphanage is not only the way of helping children. Training on the best interests of the children is not enough for directors who are focused on their own ministry or if they are doing some kind of orphanage business, use the money from the donor. We have to discuss and we need to find solution together with the director to find another way to help children, even after all the children are integrated. That is how they can still be the benefactors without keeping children in the orphanage. Another thing we have learned is to do a lot of awareness raising for the donor who was supporting orphanage. Donor will keep funding as long as they think the orphanage is the only way to help children. So we have to help them to find another way to support children without keeping them in the orphanage.